Wagner wasn't the first scientist to speculate that the Earth had once been dominated by a supercontinent. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for scientists who were once considered mad, fringe, or just plain wrong, only for history to validate their brilliance. If I'd never won the Nobel Prize, uh, I think I still would have been pretty satisfied about the discovery that we made. Number 10. Lynn Margulis. You would think that an idea describing complex life as a collaborative effort would be popular. Lynn Margulis claimed the same in her 1967 paper on the origin of mitosing cells. She believed that plant cells in mitochondria were once free bacteria. They were then engulfed by other cells and became part of them. When Lynn Margulis first proposed this theory, she wasn't believed and the idea failed to gain traction. Scientists were reluctant to accept that complex life evolved through a mutually beneficial relationship. But decades later, DNA evidence confirmed Margulis's theory. Now known as endosymbiotic theory, Margulis's work has changed our understanding of evolution and cell biology. They didn't do that step by random mutation. They did it by acquisition of a microbial genome and the integration of the genome. That's what we're saying. What was once considered by many to be biological heresy is now widely agreed to be a fundamental fact. Number 9. William Harvey Challenging tradition is not easy. In 1628, when William Harvey proposed that blood circulates through the body and is pumped by the heart, he was met with immediate scorn. We don't know exactly when Harvey realized he had discovered the circulation of the blood. We do know he was very surprised and taken aback by this because it contradicted all the teaching about medicine and about the functioning of the body for 2,000 years. Harvey's idea flew straight in the face of the popular theory proposed by the ancient Greek physician Galen. The 1,500-year-old Galenic theory suggested that blood was made in the liver and absorbed by the tissues. Most physicians who read it thought it was nonsense, indeed heretical. How could William Harvey, an Englishman, oppose the views of the great Galen, and they wrote against him. Harvey's claims seemed outlandish, but he was able to silence his critics with evidence gathered through meticulous experimentation involving dissections of animal and human organs. Science is fundamentally based on evidence, and Harvey had everything at hand to prove his theory, which is now foundational to modern studies of cardiovascular physiology. Number 8. William Coley in the 1890s, American bone surgeon and cancer researcher William Coley observed a reduction in tumor size in cancer patients who developed infections. And so he hypothesized that maybe there was some kind of connection between whatever was happening during or after an infection and cancer disappearing. Curious, Coley began injecting cancer patients with heat-killed bacteria. These bacteria were unable to reproduce, but triggered the patient's immune system to fight their presence. This also caused the patient's tumor to regress and shrink. Coley's toxins faced enormous criticism from the medical community. Many doctors did not believe his results. The development of chemotherapy also shuttered Coley's efforts, and his toxins gradually disappeared from use. This whole process is enhanced when the immune system is boosted. And that's exactly what Coley's toxins were doing. Time has proven that Coley was far ahead of his time. His efforts were the first attempt at today's promising field of cancer immunotherapy. Number 7. Joseph Lister Medical surgery was not a fun prospect in the 1800s. Many who went into surgery either died or developed post-operative infections that reduced their quality of life. Joseph Lister changed this by introducing the radical idea of sterilization. He thought that sterilization, which means getting rid of germs, could save lives. He was inspired by Louis Pasteur, a French microbiologist. Pasteur proposed that organisms too small to be seen by the naked eye were the cause of diseases. People would say there's absolutely no way that a tiny microscopic organism could possibly kill an organism as big as we are. Lister applied Pasteur's theory to the decomposition of tissue observed in physical wounds. To stop the germs behind this, Lister used carbolic acid as an antiseptic. Initially mocked for his efforts, Lister's methods drastically reduced surgical mortality. Today, antiseptic approaches are standard practice, and Lister's work laid the foundations for this. Lister had a huge impact on reducing deaths in surgery. That's why he's known to this day as the father of modern surgery. Number 6. Claire Cameron Patterson 
In the 1940s, geochemist Claire Patterson determined that the Earth was approximately 4.55 billion years old. The world is four and a half billion years old. We did it. He did this by analyzing the decay of uranium isotopes into lead isotopes in ancient meteorites. His prediction was remarkably close to the currently accepted value of 4.543 billion years. However, he also stumbled upon something even more perilous. Where's all that lead coming from? I think I know, Harrison. It's from leaded gasoline. Patterson recognized that lead was everywhere, from the atmosphere to human blood. Leaded gasoline was the primary source of this contamination. Patterson faced pushback from industry lobbyists who labeled him as a troublemaker and who actively tried to discredit his research. Science ultimately prevailed, and Patterson's data contributed to the banning of leaded gasoline. The man who figured out the age of the Earth was also responsible for one of the greatest public health victories of the 20th century. Number five, Alfred Wegener. In the autumn of 1911 at Marburg University, a young man browsing at the university library came across an interesting research paper. Hardly anyone in the early 20th century said, why are there oceans and why are there continents? Wegener is a wonderful example of how science benefits from people coming from outside a scientific field and saying, well, why don't you look at it this way? It identified fossils of identical plants and animals found on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. The pattern repeated for other organisms as well. The young sleuth also noticed the close fit of the African and South American coastlines. The more he looked, the more links he found. This prompted Alfred Wegener to propose that the continents drifted across Earth's surface. Many deemed Wegener's theory as ugly and trivial. Wegener also lacked a convincing argument on how the continents moved. His peers weren't very receptive. There was no mechanism to explain how the continents might plow through the oceans. Continental drift was just too incredible to believe. It wasn't until the 1960s, with the rise of plate tectonics, that his theory was fully vindicated. His ideas are now a central pillar of geological studies. Number 4. Barry Marshall In the 1980s, most people believed that ulcers were caused by stress or spicy foods. Australian doctor Barry Marshall had a wilder theory. Ulcers were caused by bacteria, specifically Helicobacter pylori. The concept of discovering a new bacteria, which proved that all the medical books were wrong and had to be rewritten, that was kind of exciting to us. To prove it, Marshall took the same bacteria from the gut of an ailing patient, stirred them into an infectious broth, and drank it whole. Three days later, he developed gastritis, the precursor to an ulcer. Biopsying his gut, Marshall proved that bacteria caused ulcers. His self-experimentation stunned the medical world. Later, antibiotics became the standard treatment. The discovery by Dr. Warren and myself has benefited millions of people, maybe saved a million lives over the last 10 years or 20 years. Marshall was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2005, cementing his once laughed at theory as medical fact. Number three, Galileo Galilei. In the 15th century, Nicholas Copernicus argued that the Earth orbited around the Sun, not the other way around. Stop Copernicus sorry. realized that the movements of the planets were better explained if the sun were at the center of the solar system and the earth circled it like an ordinary planet. It was a revolutionary insight. Copernicus published his controversial arguments, but was unable to fully prove the truth of his theory. This was accomplished by an Italian inventor named Galileo Galilei. Galileo built a telescope and studied the heavens, observing the moons of Jupiter and noticing their orbit around the planet. The earth moved in space, he said and he could prove it. The church said that it did not. This meant that not everything orbited around the Earth. Branded a heretic by the Catholic Church, Galileo was placed under house arrest for the rest of his life. Years later, his observations on Jupiter's moons, sunspots, and lunar craters proved Copernicus to be correct and marked the advent of the scientific revolution. He was one of the people to join na natural philosophy to mathematics and take it out of the sphere of the Aristotelians working in universities. Number two. Ignis Semmelweis. Ignis Semmelweis, a Hungarian physician, was deeply alarmed by the high mortality rate of mothers dying in childbirth. He was very frustrated by this situation where healthy women would go into the hospital to have a baby 
and almost one out of five of them died from childbed fever. Most of these deaths were attributed to childhood fever, a bacterial infection following childbirth or a miscarriage. Even more disturbing, Semmelweis observed that women were dying at a higher rate at Vienna General Hospital as opposed to those in midwife-staffed clinics. The culprit was a lack of medical hygiene. He discovered that what doctors were doing was that they would perform autopsies in one part of the hospital and then run to deliver babies in a ward next door without washing hands in between. Semmelweis found that doctors failed to wash their hands routinely. They went from autopsies to deliveries, spreading infection. So he mandated hand washing with chlorinated lime. The mortality rates dropped, but Semmelweis was ridiculed and fired. He met with so much resistance. The medical community really didn't want to change. Louis Pasteur's germ theory later proved him right, and today he is hailed as a martyr of modern hygiene. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number 1. Nikola Tesla The poster child for mad scientist, Nikola Tesla talked to pigeons, claimed to have built death rays, and dreamt about wireless electricity. He was an inventor genius who conceived of things that were way ahead of his time, but are still used today. But behind the madness, there was an immaculate spark of genius. Tesla's most significant contribution was his work with alternating current and power systems. Tesla's research made it practical and possible to set the stage for long-distance electrical power transmission. Tesla's system of transmitting electric current as an alternating current instead of Thomas Edison's direct current enabled us to transmit electricity thousands of miles with minimal loss. This was a game changer. By doing this, Tesla revolutionized power grids. Today's wireless communication, radio, and neon lights have all sprung from his genius. Considered unhinged by his peers, Tesla was a man ahead of his time, whose wildest ideas have been finally realized today. It's just amazing from a history standpoint. Tesla helped create the foundation of our electrical grid. Which of these crazy scientists do you think deserves more recognition? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more electrifying countdowns. Before William Harvey discovered the circulation of the blood, everyone believed that there were two blood systems in the body. One based on the liver, and there the veins distribute the nutrition to the whole body, and the other based on the heart, where the spirit of life is distributed with the blood to the body.